Good evening, everyone. This is Bishop Melvin e. Blake and Pastor Cheryl Blake. We're coming to you uh, from our In His Image location. Uh, we want to thank all of you who have uh, signed in. We give God the glory and the praise for, for your uh, continued support, your, your prayers for the ministry, uh, and for, for everything that's, that's going on in the world. We still know that God is still in control. As a matter of fact, tonight we want to continue with the teaching of uh, the D's and P's of innovative thinking. Tonight we're going to uh, be dealing with the area of possibility thinking. I'm going to ask Pastor Cheryl if she would open us up in prayer so that we can get right into this word. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Let's go to the throne of grace. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God, and we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you, God, for how you've kept us, God, and how you continue to be mindful of our every need. We pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, even as we enter into this time of studying your word, that some might, might understand, God, that you are God and God all by yourself. Now have your way even in this time as we break your word forth, God, that your people might be encouraged strengthened, healed, delivered, and set free. And someone might hear a word that will make them yield to come unto you, that you might become their Lord and their Savior. Now have your way as our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. As we, uh, we've we been dealing with uh, this thinking for quite some time now, and uh, I can just tell you that God is uh, so deliberate and so timing, timely because we had, had started this even before uh, our current situation in the world, and it's so important that we uh, adhere to the scriptures in this season. The Bible tells us in Romans, the 12th chapter, he says, Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is something that's very key as we uh, continue in this teaching. The Bible tells us to let this mind that's in Christ Jesus uh, be in us and uh, for us to be one minded. Uh, I, I'm, I'm reminded that the word let is, is a release of authority. It means to have a release of authority. This, uh, you know, you, you have, we, have, we have been given uh, freedom of will, freedom of choice, and it's important that we all understand that we have to be active in this renewing of the mind. The, the, the lesson for today is dealing with uh, possibility thinking, and this is something that is at the end of uh, or the result of a re renewed mind. It's, it it carries us to a uh, uh, above average level. Uh, possibility mentality, it understands its purpose and its potential to change situation. Kingdom positive thinking attacks problems, amen? amen. It doesn't just sit there and, and, and worry about them, it attacks them. And to do that, we have to be empowered, amen, as the scriptures tell us in Genesis, the book of Genesis, the first chapter. We have to receive and embrace, amen, that, that God-given dominion that he gave us in creation, amen? amen. I tell you what, I'm, I'm excited about this, um, this lesson tonight because the times that we're in, we need to really, and here I go, live in the possibilities of God. And one thing about possibility thinking is that um, it defies negative it defies the negative. So in other words, you can't be positive and negative at the same time. In other words, if you have possibility thinking, no matter what you're confronted with, you won't allow negativity to enter in. Amen? Amen. That's a good place for uh, the switch into this. Pa Pastor Cheryl alluded to the fact about uh, uh, we have to defy negative thoughts, negative statistics, and it's a work. A work to develop, amen, a winning strategy. We have to have a, a be possibility thinkers. We have to see the best of things. And, and, and Pastor Cheryl, just like everything else, we have to be committed and disciplined to this change, both in revelation and in the regiments of success. I am so, so thankful for this lesson. It, it helps us to identify where we are uh, uh, in the body of Christ mm -hmm. to help us, amen, get through uh, troubled times again, and, and I, I'm telling you that God is so timely because the one thing that's being attacked now is that thought process. Mm -hmm. We're becoming prisoners of of information, Amen. And so it's key that we uh, uh, learn how to and operate in the spirit of discernment. The Bible tells us, try the spirit, by the spirit, 
to see if it's the Spirit of God. He said, and all of you will get them. Wisdom is the principal thing, but it says, get understanding. And it's important that we, we're always looking for signs and wonders. My brothers and sisters, this is a sign, but my God has promised that it's going to be a wonder at the end of it. Amen? Amen. I tell you what, I'm excited because even, you know, the word of God, if we, you know, um, Proverbs 23 and 7 says, for as he think of in his heart, yeah. so is he. And if you think that you're defeated in your heart, then you're defeated. But if you think in your heart that you're more than a conqueror, in other words, our thoughts becomes our actions. And so therefore, if your thought process is not thinking that you are able to do all things through Christ that strengthens you, then therefore you already defeated in your own being. In other words, you have got to make sure that you have positive thoughts, not negative thoughts. And we are human, and sometimes life has a way of allowing, trying to allow negativity to enter in. But I'm a living witness that if you tear it down and replace it with the possible things that God can do for you, because the word also tells us that with God, all things are what? Possible. So therefore, as kingdom citizens, there is no reason why we need to be thinking negative, because if we're going to win, we've got to believe in our heart that we are winners. And no matter what we're confronted with, okay, this is just a situation that I've got to go through. And instead of running from the situation, you've got to run through the situation in order to get what God has for you on the other end. But too often we want to stay right where we are. But oftentimes an obstacle that's in our way is only something that's there for us to overcome that we can receive the promises of God. Amen. The Bible talks about faith being the substance of, of things not seen, but the evidence, amen. And, and so we, we are looking for evidence right now. God is looking for evidence. The, the scriptures tell us that many have said, Lord, Lord, but uh, if, I, if you allow me to paraphrase, you say, but when, when the road gets tough, you, 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 I don't even know who you are. And, and these are the times where God allows the body of Christ to show themselves strong. Uh, the, the lesson says the scripture profiles many possibility thinkers who unlike pessimistic thinkers find who find negative things to focus on, mm. the possibility thinker finds good things in, what? in, in what? the worst in the what? In the Let worst me say situation. that again. In the worst, worst situation. situations. I, I can hear the Roman writer saying that all things work together. And, and this is truly a, a, a time of, of uh, seeing where if your faith is, is really standing up. You know, and we can't feel bad about that because the disciples even at one time asked Jesus and they've been uh, traveling the road with him, uh, going through all and witnessing all of the things that was occurring in his travel uh, uh, to the cross. And and they they too had to holler out, uh, uh, Master, increase our faith. So it behooves us, amen, to not think that this is not in relationship or is not in regard to us. Amen. It, hmm. see, it, it, and we got to really, you, you got to get your core belief, hmm. the center of who you are, what makes you, you. It has to get to the place where you realize, man, no matter what's going on, yeah, yeah. nothing is too hard for God. Uh -huh. And that believing this makes all things possible. Some things. All, all things. It's a small Sometimes. word, but it, it covers a lot of, of space. It says all <laughs> things. In other words, nothing that you can be confronted with Come on now. cannot be defeated by your faith. You, you know what? I, I, you know what? I, I thank God. Let me, let me use the, um, the example of, if we go to the natural for a minute, the example of Superman. You know, think about him, you know, Clark Kent with his suit on and his glasses, <laughs> you know, and he went into a booth and changed his clothes. We can go into the word of God and the word of God can right. change who we are in the natural because we realize that we're not wrestling against what? Flesh and blood. That's the worst situation. But against what? Principalities yeah. in high places. high places. In other words, God has equipped us. I got my equipped gear on tonight in case y'all didn't notice. <laughs> you know, but you know. Hey, that's cheating. You, hey, but you have to realize. <laughs> she, she didn't tell me. You got to work with what you got. You Amen. know, no matter what. But you have to understand that everything that you need He's deposited on the inside of who he's called you to be. So therefore, no matter what the situation looks like, and I don't know about you, Bishop, but we've been in some worse situations. Mm. I mean, I mean, it's like, put the nail in it. I mean, put a stick in it. It was over, yeah, right? Yeah. But 
even in the midst of what we thought was the end of whatever it was, God was saying, uh-uh, it's only the beginning of the promises that I've already said were yours. Amen. So if you don't look at it in the negative and hold fast to the possibilities, then God will move on your behalf. And he'll do it what? Suddenly. Suddenly. You know, suddenly. And that goes back to how you think. In other words, you can't hang with a negative person. Yeah. And not allow it to rub off on you if you don't operate in the possibilities that, God, the possibilities. Has, that God has placed on the inside of you. In other words, you have the authority to change the atmosphere. So regardless what's going on in the natural, because of the God that lives in you, you have the full confidence in and through Christ to change the atmosphere, no matter how bad the situation looks. And I'm telling you, sometimes you just got to be able to say, uh-uh, no, you've got to tear it down in your own thought process so God can show up and show out on your behalf. And while we are talking, and we thank God for all of those virtual viewers that are worshiping with us tonight, and we are thankful for all the Ahikam folk that are logging in. And we see you as your, your comments are strolling on the screen. But I'm excited because I can't think of a better time for us to stand strong in our faith and to stand in trusting and being obedient to what God is calling us, even in this season. Because he is just showing that if you change the way you look at a situation, yeah. then he'll move on your behalf. But as long as you're saying, woe is me, and you're operating a negative, you're holding up the hand of God moving on your behalf. And, and and I, I'm thinking back because I kind of got stuck there for a minute. I had this picture because I used to love Superman. Amen. I love heroes, you know. That's why I like Law and Order and Westerns and, and what have you. And yeah. I, I, I thought they're not, about. They're not heroes. Th those are heroes. Superman. Wide Earth is a hero. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. Hey, amen. Look, but, but watch this. <laughs> when Pastor Cheryl said that Superman had his uh, uh, telephone booth to get in. Mm -hmm. My spirit just started shaking inside of me because God was connecting with me. And God said, he may have a phone booth, but we got the word that we can get in. Yeah, so yeah. when troubles come, we have to get in our word because being in that word <laughs> will erase every negative situation yes, and cause a positive outcome. Mark the ninth chapter says, and they brought him unto him. And when he saw him straightway, the spirit tarried him and he fell to the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked the father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, it's been, let me, let me just cut a little bit, since he was a child. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and then he said, but if thou canst do anything. Hmm. Oh, my God. See, God has, Jesus has compassion on us. And he says, he, he turned it around. And he told him, he said, listen, if you can believe, hmm. it can be done. Ask your neighbor, ask yourself, ask your friend, ask your family, nudge somebody, and just ask them, can you believe? Can you believe that even right now, God is bringing you through? I heard somebody say on, 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 on Facebook today, they, they said, if you're going through mm, trials, I, let me put it like that, he said, keep on going. Don't stop where you are. Uh, uh, the Bible tells us that when, when uh, uh, Joshua sent them out, amen, in, in, the, uh, in the scriptures in the Old Testament, he said uh, the 12, only one came back with a good report. You know, he, God sent us to the, to the place of milk and honey, and everybody's talking about uh, the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites. Mm -hmm. and, and God is saying, he's asking us to, to be like Joshua and say, let's go up at once. <laughs> and possess it. This is your time, beloved, to possess those promises that God has for you. It doesn't matter if they're bigger. It doesn't matter if this is too big for you. It doesn't matter if the opposition appears to be stronger. As a matter of fact, in our weakness, that's when God shows his strength. So these things should carry us to a place where it only makes us better. Somebody say amen. Gotta, it gotta, only gotta, makes us better. Yes, Pastor. I, I, I got to jump in right here. I got to jump in right here because the one thing that, that Christ, he always exhibited um, this kind of thinking. We're talking about positive thinking. He always exhibited positive thinking whenever and in every negative situation, he caused a positive outcome. Right. No, no matter how much, even, you know, listen, we don't even have to, we, from the beginning, even when he went to Calvary, this is Holy Week, right? Yeah, yeah. Even when he went to Calvary, it was a negative situation in the natural. 
but the outcome was a positive situation Amen. because of what he did for you and for me and for you and for me. He changed the whole the whole dynamic. Change the atmosphere. He changed the whole dynamics of things to come because he died for you and me. So he took the death, which could have been a negative situation, and he turned that thing around to a positive outcome. Right. And we're sitting mm -hmm. here today because of what he did for us. But positive he, outcome. Positive outcome. Positive thinking. Because if Christ had looked at every situation, and he went through some stuff. Right. You know, the lack of respect, the lack of honor. You know, everything he I, went through. I think through. the scripture even said that the, the prophet's not that. honored in his own his home. own home. Oh, my God. You know, think about it. You know, and I mean, think about it. He went through everything, but he exhibited a positive outcome. You know, through every situation, you can go through the word of God and see every situation that he encountered, even though it might have looked negative on the outside, he turned that thing around to a positive outcome. Not one time, but every time. Amen. And we talked about, we talked about in, in the opening, the, the, the reality that we have to be a part of this transformation, hmm. this renewing of our mind. And, and one of the things we want to uh, uh, bring out tonight, this, this re renewing of the mind, it's more than just scripture memorization. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. It's more than that. This process has uh, 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 to uproot, amen, uh, um, establish flaws in our core belief because of sin. So the first thing that we have to do is we've got to cultivate mm -hmm. this thinking. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, I, when I go back to the days of the farm, and let me give a shout out to the Eastern Shore. We thank God for you guys and your support. But I remember at an early age, because I was driving a tractor at the age of eight, shh, don't tell anybody. And, and I would be left in the field, and that would give me a chance to think. And I would be instructed on what I would do. And, and there was an expected outcome from uh, uh, that, that my, my uh, 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 uncles and grandfather had uh, based on what I was doing, which means I had, to, I had to take my mind from being eight years old and just following the structure that I had been given to establish in me a, a, a can-do attitude. Some things had to be uprooted. I couldn't think about uh, my age. I had to think about uh, things that were not I had to uh, uh, uproot those things that were of no benefit to me, mm -hmm. and I had to incorporate what was necessary. And one of the things that I found out through those times, and it has yet to change, we have to tear the ground up, amen, before the seed can take root. And, and, and what we have to do, we first have to say, uh, God, I need your help in this. Help me discipline my thinking mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that I might be able to move into that place that I might be reconciled in my thinking mm -hmm. that I can see me the way you see me, mm -hmm. the way you mandated my life to be. Help me become a kingdom possibility thinker, mm -hmm. amen, that I might become relentless in, in my resolve to, to win life's situations. Amen? It says uh, uh, in 2 Corinthians 8, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us mm -hmm. to triumph and, in Christ and make it manifestation the Savior of his knowledge by us in every place. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And, and I, I, thank, uh, you know, I thank God for this opportunity tonight. I'm excited. Um, you know, that I'm sharing here with you. We spent a minute since we shared the platform together. Amen? Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. You be all right. You be all yeah, right. Yeah, I'm learning. I'm you learning. Know, we even spent a lot of time home. Somebody I'm say, learning. Somebody she breaking say, me, y'all. She say, breaking lockdown, me. Lockdown, lockdown. But <laughs> we got some, trust me, we become some possibility thinkers, you know, and I tell you over this time. But I, I thank God because his word always gives us everything that we need. And, and, I, and I thank how he, he always pours out the scripture because he never allows us to forget. Because Romans 8 and 37 says, Nay, in all these yeah. things, we are more than conquerors more. through him that loved us. So whenever the situation looks like it's bleak and it's not going to work out for your good, you've got to say, self, self. You've got to speak to that situation and you've got to say, Nay, in all these things, yeah. I'm more than a conqueror through him that loves me. You've got to make it personal. I know I'm proud, but you've got to make that scripture personal that it might be able to carry you to the next level that God is calling you to come to. And I'm, I'm, I'm just so grateful because, like I said, in every situation, 
It's easy to look at the naysayers and the negative part of it instead of seeing the hope in and through Christ Jesus. And therefore, tonight, this possibly, I can't think of a better time for us to go through this lesson other than the season that we're in. Because if you look at the news every day, it will, it will cause you to go into a slight um, state of possible depression, but that's not a spirit of God. Pastor Cheryl, look, tell, look, help me out. Tell me what 1 John 5 is saying, uh, that message Bible. Help me with that word. It says, every God begotten person. Everyone? Every uh -huh. God begotten person conquers the world's ways. Yeah. The conquering through, the conquering power that brings the world, the world. to his knees <laughs> is our faith. Oh my God. Is our faith. The person who was who wins out over the world's ways is simply the one who believes Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. You know, I, I'm grateful for that. I'm telling you, this is this is an awesome lesson for an awesome season that we're in. Because I don't want to. I don't know about you, but I trust God. All the way. I, I trust God. And, and I just to go back to what you said about the farmer. You know, I didn't grow up around no farm. You know, I, I'm, you know, I'm from Southeast. You get closer. You know, but we, we, you know, we didn't have no, 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 no farm. You know, we, we had some grass. You know, and sometimes, you know, we had to, the, the break up that dirt that was in the yard because it looked like clay sometimes. But, yeah. but when you did it the right way, it produced a harvest. You got some grass. You had to put a little extra work in it. And what I'm saying is that sometimes you might have to put a little extra work in what you're doing in order to get the expected in. In other words, put more time in prayer. Put more time in obedience. Put more time in trust. Put more time in how you're receiving what God is telling you. Stop questioning what God is saying and start flowing in the spirit of God and the things of God. And he will show up on your behalf. We're talking about positive possibility thinking and how are we cultivating possible possibility thinking. And, and, and here's a hindrance that we run into. And this, this scripture, it constantly is coming to life in other forms. Uh, the revelation of it, as we, we mentioned earlier, that we have to be disciplined in the revelation because it says, therefore, my brethren, be steadfast, mm -hmm. unmovable, always abound in the, in, in the work of the Lord. And in Psalms 1, it said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Mm. You, you can't at this time. Come on now. You can't listen at those that are not saved. Yeah. yeah. You know, we have, to, we have to do our part. As, as uh, my daughter helped me with last night, a shout out to Ebony and again this morning. You know, <laughs> we have to do our part, you know, because I can't be... Um, so far out there that I forget and, and it becomes a selfish act on even my part. My faith it has no value if it looks like I'm being selfish. And, and you got to understand that whenever there's confusion, it's time to back up. So, so what we have to do, we have to prepare to make this maturity commitment. We have to cultivate it. We know we're going to be tested. Every righteous resolve will be proven through the times of testing. Mm. It said, these are these tests are not meant to break you. Hold on, my brother. I, I heard a song. I'm not going to sing it. But it said, <laughs> don't break up before you break through. You probably got yeah. the words wrong. Yeah. But either way, it said, they're not meant to break you. They are designed to really, say really, prove who you are. Hmm. They, 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 they take us to a character performance and a level of excellence to always reveal one's true and consistent, amen, character. Wow. The ultimate goal of this personal maturity mm -hmm. is a commitment to transformation. Hmm. See, we can't be uh, conformed to this world, but we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. we got to think differently then to get different that. results. Huh. Somebody say, say amen. Again. Say we've again. got to, we've got to, we've got to think differently in order to get different results. I don't know about you, but I, I, I get tired of uh, seeing my brothers and sisters go through the same thing. You, we get a blessing, but the thought is not really sealed because as soon as that blessing wears off, and it, it, the, the, the lesson is telling us that, that it's alluding to the fact that you're constantly going to be tested yeah. to show you, amen. You know, when you go to school, you, you, they, they, they teach you a lesson, mm -hmm. then they test you. Hmm. And then when it's about time to graduate, amen, to move to the next level, mm -hmm. you are going to be tested on those same things again 
in a different order. Yeah, yeah. So when we're confronted with things that are similar to our victories, we have to realize that if we are free of that thinking, we can go through it and we have to look at that thing and laugh. Say, devil, I know who you are. Mm -hmm. See, because the next thing we got to do in order to, amen, reach this next place. So wait a minute, let's, let's go back for a minute. Oh, okay, let's okay, go, let's okay. Because you said something about being com be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh -huh. and, and the purpose of that is that you that ye may prove oh, yeah, what is yeah. that good and acceptable and perfect it. will of God. In other words, your actions should line up to the word of God and the will of God for your life. And no, it doesn't matter what the world is doing or what the world looks like. Your actions should always line up and prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I don't yeah. care what everybody else is doing, but what is God requiring of you to do in this season? Because you do know as seasons change, so should your growth in the things of God change. You should not be operating the same way you were operating when you first accepted him, because once you, when you, your first step to salvation is accepting him as Lord and Savior. That's when the growth begins, because somebody needs to know that your salvation is a process. And the process will continue until you make it home to glory. I, I think there's a scripture say you got to work it out. Work it out. <laughs> you got to work it out. So in other words, you've got to understand it. You have to grow through every situation hold, in your hold, life. What is that? You got to do what? Grow through it. Grow through you've it. You've got to grow, grow through it. it. And that's, that's, that begins with how good, you... Good word, grow through it. You know what? And look, we're getting tongue-tied with the word possibility, <laughs> possibility thinking. In other words, because this is a good thing, because we have to make sure we keep that word at the forefront front of every situation that we encounter. I believe in the possibilities of God. Right. You know, and no matter how difficult this might look, because I realize that there's nothing too hard for God. Like I said, we you and I wouldn't be sitting here today if if it was too hard for God. Wouldn't be here. Wouldn't be here. <laughs> wouldn't be here. You know. Some of us wouldn't be anywhere right now if it wasn't <laughs> for the possibilities of God. But we've got to cultivate the possibility thinking in our lives. And let, let, me, let me just give a shout out to your faith. Some of the greatest lessons, amen, of you having grown in God mm -hmm. and, and you having witnessed, excuse me, the hand of God in mm -hmm. your life, mm -hmm. you see them in the rear mirror. Mm -hmm. See, and, and that's why you, you got to, look, when you jump to a next level, don't get too excited about the next level if you did not bring understanding with you. Mm. Because if you don't bring understanding with you, you will never achieve deliverance. And a lot of times, we're not being delivered from this thought process. It's not being cultivated properly because we're not doing the correct removal process of those things that are detrimental to our growth. We, we got to remove the things that want to... Uh, uh, keep us, that want to hinder us and, and grab a hold of the things that want to promote growth and development in our lives. Our attitude is both influenced by our thinking and shaped by our perception. perception. Mm -hmm. You got to check out the way you look at stuff. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, you know, I mean, uh, 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 when I go to the dictionary, there's a whole long list. You got synonyms, homonyms, all kind of nims up in there. But the key to it is, in order to really embrace the, uh, the authority of the word that you're being introduced to, mm -hmm. you got to look at that word. You got to meditate on it. And, and the results will always be one that will transform you. There's that word again. It will transform you and your core beliefs will, ultim will ultimately transform your, watch this, your behavior yeah, yeah. and your productivity. Mm. And this thing happens quickly. Mm -hmm. God streamlines the way you think. And you find yourself in a place of kingdom thinking mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, diligently seek me. Those words, you, you want to highlight those words. You want to look at every different uh, uh, definition for it so that you can uh, embrace what it's telling you. So that when the Bible says, rightly divide the word of God mm -hmm. so that you can uh, uh uh, divided properly, amen, when you're confronted by the, uh, the, the, the disappointing acts against you in life. So, so this is a way that, as we move to the next point, is to avoid 
corrupt thinking. Yeah. Man, yeah. you you got to tear that stuff down. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, yeah. especially now, sometimes you 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 got to just cut your TV off and look at something funny. The other night, me and Pastor C, man, we we looked at two movies. Well, actually, uh, she looked at one and a half. <laughs> I, I, I turned around, I looked for her, she was gone. <laughs> but we we sat there and you know and, and just enjoyed ourselves. I came back. I came back. You know, I didn't I know her then. I, I, I didn't know end. she came back. I came back because at end. that point I had checked out. Obviously, yeah, I came back to the but, end. But uh, uh, they talk about social separation. But it's it's allowing us to have a place of uh, social gathering. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's gathering of our thoughts to appreciate uh, one another even more to know why you're in this place. And again, in all things, you got to get understanding. Yeah, and and yeah. we, I'm thankful for her putting up with me all these years. I really am. But at the same time, oh. I can't promise her anything. Oh, yeah, oh yes, you can. I oh, can't. You, no, you'll give me some. No, you, you told me I can't oh, promise oh, oh, you. Though. I you you get, told me to avoid. I need you to get you, some look, possibility you, you thinking on that. You told me to avoid uh -uh, corrupt We need some thinking. possibility thinking on that point. Where the church at? I need somebody <laughs> to help me avoid. Can I get some corrupt amen? thinking? Oh no, that's positive. Is it don't speak things that are that are not spiritual? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you okay. Know? Uh huh. We're gonna cultivate a kingdom thinking possible personality right now. <laughs> Is that what we're gonna oh, do? We're gonna do that. I thought it was just a thinking. Mm -mm. But oh, you know, I, I'm grateful because you know one of the things I can say, if you look at this thing, everything that you've gone through in your life that has brought you to whatever point or whatever station you find yourself at right now in this season, whatever season that you're in, you know, um, I've learned how to be grateful. And one of the things that we raising kids, we thought it was um, a never-ending endeavor. But now that our kids are grown, we have the, the um, blessed advantage of seeing our grandkids. And what's amazing is that how our children um, have a tendency to act like us. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's the uncultivated um, version of us. Yeah, no, as, with no restraints. As a matter of fact, and, 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 look, um, I, don't, I don't mean to be rude, but you hit something right here. They, as a matter of fact, I, I'm beginning to think that my children are doing a better job raising me oh, yeah, than are. I did raising them. God bless Amen. you. <laughs> you know, but that, what they do, they, they basically, they keep us balanced and they keep us in check. And, and what, but what's even more amazing, the seeds that they have, them little grandchildren of ours, right. woo, keep on living. I tell you, they're like many, many versions of all, all of, of us. All of us. And, and, and they... The, the mindset of, the, of this next generation, um, how they are so um, um, intellectually inclined and how you know, they have excelled beyond what we could ever imagine, right. the things that they have at their disposal right now, um, their creativity, um, the technology, whatever it is. And as a result of that, there is, that's why possibility thinking is what it is because they were born with that and it's up to us to realize that we have to hold fast to that and be able to be able to deposit that in it. That's why we can't afford to have corrupt thinking because yeah. like we grew through some things, we've got to pray for them knowing that God's got them covered like he had us covered, even right. if we didn't realize it. Right. But we can't allow corrupt thinking to enter into any situation, even what we're dealing with right now, because God is still in control. He's still on the throne. And I'm grateful because Christ is still sitting at his right hand. Right. So he still knows what we have need of. But we have to be obedient to the spirit of God, and as well as we've got to submit to the will of God, as we go through these trying times, knowing that we're going to come out of this and God is going to still get the glory. We, we have to be mindful. And, and this is a delicate thing. The, the, the mind, the, the, the grooming, the growing, uh, the cultivating of a young one's spirit. Uh, and, 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 and I thank God for every opportunity, every learning opportunity. I smile all the time as I, I see, again, how uh, intellectually my grandkids are, uh, 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 have, have advanced and mm -hmm. excelled in life, and whenever they put their hand to something, they're so successful at it. They may not be the best, but they're, they're happy in doing mm -hmm. it. Amen? Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's key that, that us, uh, uh, those that are supposed to help guide them, uh, as Pastor Cheryl has alluded to, we can't uh, hand down corrupt thinking. We can't uh, let our thinking be governed by suspicions and assumptions and 
uh, uh, speculations or short circuit accurate thinking. Or natural we, knowledge. We, right. We got to make sure that, that everything we give them is, spiritual. is, is, is a result of mm -hmm. the uh, uh, con conclusion, collu conclusion, I'm sorry, that has the benefit of factual information so that they can grab back to that uh, uh, in times of trouble. So it's important that uh, uh, we are giving them the word. I was so blessed through a conversation with my daughter Ebony the other day when she said that Kaylin, who's the oldest of the grands, said that, wow, this would be the first Easter that she hasn't been in church. Mm -hmm. You know, and for her to be thinking that way, man, because I wouldn't need, I was thinking about when I was going to get out of church. You know, uh, there's a song about, 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 yeah, about, uh, wow. that's why I like that song about the uh, Canton Spirituals. I like all of them. Here we go. But they say, uh, Not the Kansas, my, 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 my mother drugged me to church. Well, my mother used to drug me to church too, and I just could not wait to get out because I wasn't understanding none of it. Amen. I didn't even get five cents for candy. Wow. Amen. So I was ready to get up out of there. Well, God but, is a good God. Oh, he? man. Now I can't Ooh, get away from I know that's right. Bless the name of the Lord. <laughs> Bless him. You know, but one thing, before we move on to avoiding condition thinking, you know, I just want to add this one point. You know, um, corrupt thinking, and we might have said this, but I want to make sure we reiterate that, is solely based on natural knowledge and instincts, which are earthly and fleshly void of the wisdom of God. Mm, can you say that again? Corrupt thinking is solely based on natural knowledge and instincts, which are earthly and fleshly void of the wisdom of God. Mm. Ain't no God in it. Ain't no God in it. It's all you. <laughs> and, you know, this is the thinking that reacts emotionally and carnally without the counsel of the word mm, of God. Lord, help. If you're operating in your emotions and if you're operating carnally, you know, come on, you know when you're operating out of the will of God, when you know it's all you, yourself, and you, Mm -hmm. God ain't even in the mix no kind of way. You're all up in your flesh and your emotions, amen, and you looking all ugly and you don't even realize how ugly you acting. That's corrupt thinking. And, and, and those, you know, it traps you in that level, and you've got to be able to tear that down because that's not of God. But one thing about it, God always has a word, amen, um, that you should receive anything. The word of God says in James um chapter 1, verses 7, it says, For let not the man, that man, think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. And 8, verse 8, part A says, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Yeah. If you're lacking some stability in your life, then you need to really do a self-check to realize where your thought process is. Are you really operating in possibility thinking, or are you relying on your own ability, your own aptitude, your own um, thoughts, and your own process instead of submitting to the perfect will of God for your life. As a matter of fact, I, I, I hear the scripture reading again. Uh, the Bible tells us in our communion time, in our mm -hmm. communion settings, it says, let amen. a man first examine himself. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and, and then he talks, it goes, that's the reason why many of us are sick. Mm. Because we merely have not taken the time to self-check ourselves. Hmm. We're pointing everywhere else for the problem. Hmm. And, and we're trying to give it that emotional, that carnal uh, solution, which is a liability to hmm. our success. Hmm. And, and as we're avoiding corrupt, uh, corrupt thinking, we also got to uh, uh, avoid condition thinking. <laughs> we we got to make sure our conditions are, are based on, again, the word of God. It can't be based on the word of Melvin. Amen. Mm. The word of Cheryl, whether it's pastor or bishop, it has to be based on the word of God. That's why it behooves us to, to uh, challenge our leadership. Mm. Amen. To minister. The amen. Word, the the word. word of God. See, and to live it. And, and, to, and, yeah, to, live and it. to live it. You, you can't know. talk about it. You got to be about it. Come yeah. on. Come oh, on. oh, you should have had your shirt on. Don't uh, talk about it. Be Let about it. it off, you got to be about it. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, this is the be about it set. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to, we have to watch our, our, our conditioned thinking. That what, conditioned what, thinking. What is it? What is it? Conditioned thinking is uh, unmovable thinking mm -hmm. in the wrong area. Thinking and deliberating what? Based on what? Uh, our on flesh. A, on intentional and intense indoctrination, whether subtle or blatant, with the objective of controlling beliefs and behavior, right. must be carefully scrutinized. 
you know, again, that's all you. That's condition thinking. Condition oh, oh, thinking. Now, wait, don't get personal. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we do have to go back home, right? We got yeah, I thought I, I thought I heard that tone Woo, before. It's all tone, you. No, it's I'm, all you. <laughs> God is not in that anywhere. Not in it. Mm -mm. See, because some of the things I used to do in my life will make that conditional thinking raise its yeah. uh, ugly head, right? Okay. But again, we we have to we have to avoid cluttered thinking. Yeah. You know, yeah. We, you got to step back sometime. That's why the Bible tells us, man, Deuteronomy gives us all of those blessings. Well, let's back up a minute. Let's back oh, up. Oh, okay, okay, let's okay. Move. We don't want to move too fast because we well, want well, you guys, and if we don't get through this tonight, you guys can tune back in because we're going to still deal with this possibility <laughs> thinking and Bishop Tapping, but this is some good stuff, and we pray that you're enjoying it because I'm having a good time up here with yeah. Bishop because it's a season that we really have to watch how we're thinking about not only ourselves, but life in general and right. the things of God. So we have to avoid conditional thinking. And that is, you know, it, and you get to that point, I'm like, okay, God, how can we do that? Because it's easy to slip into it because what? We always say the flesh is will, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Right. When you go through different phases in your life, sometimes you want to slip back into a place of comfortability because it's better to operate in the known than not the unknown. Right. And we get comfortable in a certain place, you know? And, and, and I, I'm, I'm grateful because we have to move past that. It's time to, you know, we need to really tell ourselves, you've got to clean some stuff up. You've got to clean, you know, the old stuff in your closet that you've been, we've been spending some time cleaning out, you know, that stuff that you know that you're never going to wear again. And some closet been cleaning. some closet cleaning. And you've got to do some inward cleaning on the spirit man. Yeah. Remove some stuff out of you that's not of God. And move some stuff out because God is trying to pour and deposit some new things in you. Avoid conditioned thinking. And, and one thing it says, conditioned thinking can either limit you or liberate you based on the particular beliefs and standards being imposed through the conditioning. And, 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 and I, I just got to stop there for a second. Get this thought in. Come on, get it in. Because you hit it. You said it, it can either do what? It can either... Uh oh. It can limit you, limit you, or liberate you, or liberate you, based on the particular beliefs and standards being imposed through the conditioning. Cause see, here, here's something that that that, that uh, 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 I wanted to drop off right in there. We we uh we like well, you're saying that we should discipline ourselves, you know, but then you talk about uh, uh, conditioning is bad. No, 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 conditioning is not bad. All conditioning is not bad. Hmm. See, conditioning has to come from or be a result of a behavior mm -hmm. that carefully scrutinizes oneself. Hmm. And then all conditioned thinking is not bad, only the mental condition that is, watch this, contrary to the orders of God and the principles of righteousness. Conditioned thinking can either... Hey, I heard that before. It's based on particular beliefs and standards being imposed through your conditioning. Hmm. I don't know about you, but I am so glad. I don't believe I just said that. I, I don't <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said it. <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> Let me say it again. I don't know about you, but I am so glad that... Well. that <laughs> I'm about to sing up in here. Say it. Uh, uh, come on. Come uh, on with cut it. Cut it. Cut it. No. <laughs> come on with it. That's for me, baby. That's I not know. for everybody. Okay, okay. Come on. Ooh, Lord oh, Jesus. Jesus. But look. Uh, <laughs> see, you make me lose my tongue. I'm sorry out there, y'all. Don't be sorry. Come on. Y'all know she old. No, I'm just kidding. No. But look. So so we have to be careful what, what sticks to us. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Because everything that you have to deal with... Mm -hmm. It becomes a part of us. Amen? And, and, and so we have to be able to tear down those things that are not liberating us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we have to uh, uh, push those things that have caused us to have limited thinking, mm -hmm. to have limited conditioning, mm -hmm. to have limited belief systems. That's why God say only through faith. Can I be pleased? Right. And, and it's not, when we get past us, all of us, mm -hmm. me, myself, and I, and me, and him, and all of them that we want to call ourselves, when we get by all of that, yeah, yeah. When, when the word of God has brought us to our knees, amen, then we can bring this world to its knees. 
That's why you can't, why, you're, why, why you don't want to deal with a, a conditioned thinking, you, you can have clutter thinking. Okay, I want to back up because I'm still We just condition. backed up once. I need to back up again. We need to park it <laughs> I think she's trying to keep me to, here today, y'all. We need y'all. to park it right here, Bishop. Park it. We can't rush through this because I'm enjoying this because we need this because the one point we want to make sure that we give, you know, um, on that is that um, conditioned thinking normally is cloaked in the disguise of safety and protection mm. um, measures that only, only to trap you into a mindset that resists the truth of God's word. How did I get? Pay, how did you I skip that? that? That's I what, needed that one. We tag teaming. I got you. I, we, I need that one. I'm, yeah. You, no, I need. You need that I one. need, that, need one. that one. Somebody say me. But I'm gonna Lamar, tell you. I hope you listening. I you need, need that, that one. one. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you something. You know, we really have to realize that it can trap you into a mindset that resists the truth of God's word. That's conditioning thinking, and you have to make sure you don't get stuck there. Corrupt thinking is bad enough, but when you avoid conditioning, when you allow conditioning thinking to set in, it stagnates you, and it stagnates your growth in the things of God. You can't grow past where you are because you're too busy conditioning yourself because it's a place of safety and protection in your own mindset instead of trusting in God to cover you in every situation and every area of your life. And, and I'm grateful because if you can move past that and you're cultivating a kingdom thinking, um, a kingdom thinking personality based on possibility thinking, and then you're avoiding corrupt thinking, and then you get to the point because how many people really understand that there's always going to be something that's going to come your way? And, and, and one thing I can tell you that the devil don't handle new tricks. No. He just might dress it up a little bit different, but it's still dealing with your thought process. We said it all the time, that your mind is what the battlefield yeah. of the enemy. So he's going to mess with your thought process. You know, and you have to really always understand you have to see God in everything, in every situation, and every area of your life. Because if something comes your way, know that God has allowed it. Yeah. And when He allowed it, He's equipped you, equipped you with everything that you need to handle whatever He's allowed to come your way. But it starts with your thought process. So if you can get past those and always govern your thoughts, and line them up according to the will of God and the word of God, you're going to be able to grow through whatever it is that comes your way. And based on that, I'm excited because Colossians 2 and 8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through the philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. You've got to make sure that everything that you're doing is lining up to the perfect will of God for your life. It might not look like you want it to look, but you need to understand and you'll realize if it's God or if it's you. Yeah. And when you line it up against the world of God, it will always show you if it's God or if it's you. Amen. We Look, I, I know it's, it's still five minutes more, but the Lord is telling me that, that we, we still have to find a way to break at this point. Um, I thank God for everybody that's, that's tuned in. I give God the glory. We want to have a clean break because it appears that we're going to be back here next week. We're going to be back here next Amen. week. You so, are, I got you, babe. It's going to be me and you. Hey, it's going to be me and you. Hey, hey, I'm coming out of the grave <laughs> on, on Sunday. I'm coming out. Let me no. tell you something. I, I, you know, I'm excited because um, it's time for us really to, to stand on the word of God like never before and to trust God beyond what our natural eyes may see. And on a serious note, like I said, God does everything well. And it's not by chance we're in this lesson on tonight. You know, and it's not by chance that you and I are sitting here. Um, and, and it's not by chance that we're being encouraged ourselves because we're human like everybody else. It's yeah. not that we've obtained. And a lot of times people say, oh, well, they pastors and they this and that. No, 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 no. We're no. all in this together. Understand yeah. that we're in this together. In spite of what it looks like, none of us have obtained. So it's not like we've got this all wrapped up because not at all. with every level of exaltation comes another level, you know, that you've got to go through some things in order that God might still get the glory no matter what it is. Because when you grow through some things, it says once you've been converted, then you're supposed to go back and what? Strengthen, Strengthen your brethren. Yeah. And a lot of times we're not converted, so we don't have what we need to do what we need to have in order to go back and strengthen somebody else. But because of our mindset, when we begin to begin to take on what? The mind of Christ. And right. you talked about that. 
We've got to be renewed, got to be transformed by the renewing of renewing our mind. Of our We've got to change the way we think about everything that we're confronted with. And, and, and watch with. this. We got to do that constantly. Every day. Yeah. Every single day. Yeah. But I'm not going to prolong it. I've enjoyed hanging out with you today, Bishop. Hey, we've been doing a lot of that. We've been doing a lot of <laughs> that. Amen. It's all Amen. good, though. Hey, you know, it, it, it has I ain't no waste good. time. Yeah, me either. Okay, good answer. Good answer. <laughs> but we hope, we hope that something has been said yeah. that has encouraged you, and we hope that you will tune in again on next, on, well, we'll be here Sunday. As a matter of fact, uh, this is this guy named Bishop Blake who's going to be ministering on Sunday. Amen. Oh, I'll Right be here. here. Amen. Okay. You can tune at, in. In his image, you can tune in at 11 o'clock. We pray that, that the word of God that he has placed in my spirit Will 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 bless you. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna do something I don't do a lot of time. God told me that 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 I could release the title, and the title for it is "You Have Been on My Mind," hmm. and, and I'm looking forward to what God is about to do continuously mm -hmm. for us in this trying time. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, let me just lift up a word of prayer, if it's okay. Gracious Father, we come down to say thank you for yes, how God. you continue to grow us, God. How you continue to watch over us, Father. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise, God. We we thank you, Father, with our whole hearts because you've sent people, amen, that are hungering and thirsting for your word, God. We give God the glory, amen, for those that have even trusted us to pray for their families. We lift up the every name that has been where there's been a call, a petition to pray for them, God. We yes, we God. we we would we be mindful that they're in our hearts, God, even though we may not call the names, know that we are praying for each and every one of you. Amen. God, we thank you for you. Continue to keep us. Yes. No matter what's going on, you continue to strengthen us, God. You continue to carry us from, from, from level to level, God. Basically. And God, we thank you so very much, God, because we see you at work yes, God. continuously, Father. We've been through a lot of things, God, but yet we're not tired, God. Yes. We pray now for the faith of your people that we continue to hold on and be disciplined by the times, God. We realize that yesterday is gone, yes. but we still got a tomorrow to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Father, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for those that help uh, uh, Deacon Tyrone, who helps us get this, uh, amen, this broadcast out. Again, I want to lift up the name of uh, uh, Alicia and our Alicia, who are always there helping us. Uh, Deacon is Pat Mack. Everyone that's involved in any fashion, God, we pray that you continue to keep them as only you can, God, people, is our prayer, Father. Move them by your spirit. Have us to embrace your word. And even these times, God, for we realize you're just purging some things from us, that the things we have, they will not be lost. As a matter of fact, you're guaranteeing us through your word in John that they will forever remain. You, God. So, God, we ask you these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. You, for we realize through the instruction of your word that it then it glorifies you. So we thank you, Father and, give, Father, and give you glory in all things. Watch over and keep us, God, is our prayer. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Thanks again for tuning in. We appreciate you. Continue to be blessed knowing that God is still in control. Much love to each and every one of you. Until the next time. God bless. God bless. I'm